Garrison, top Orlando realtor with Remax Town and Country Real Estate here. I'm here to answer the question, in the market here in 2018, as a buyer, should you consider buying a short sale or an auction property? Now, there's four kinds of statuses in the MLS. There's what we call regular, it's actually called none, and the none is it's not a bank owned, a short sale, or an auction. It's owned by a regular human being. The second category is REO, real estate owned or bank owned properties, and then about 1% of the properties are short sale, and maybe 1 or 2% are auction as well. This video is about why you should not consider a short sale or an auction. Answer one, it's only about two or three percent of the market. Answer two is short sales used to be several years ago, maybe five or eight years ago, that was all that I did. I would actually look for people who were helping who were to help them sell their short sales. I was looking for people to help your short sales, looking for people to help buy and get into a short sale. The banks tended to work with you with a really, really good deal. Now, it's not a good deal anymore. Why? Because the banks don't want to do a short sale. Everyone thinks that the banks are worried about you not making your payments and they're all motivated to do something with this more. No, the whole system, billions of dollars of industry and rewards from the government are set up for when you don't make the payments, all they want is to take back the property. They have this whole system of foreclosure and interrupting it is a huge inconvenience to them. So when you buy a short sale property, what happens is you make an offer that the seller thinks the bank will accept. So they say, well, let's, you know, the house is worth 200, we're gonna turn in an offer for 180, let's hope the bank accepts that. So they accept your offer, you put an escrow deposit down, and now you're gonna be waiting on the short sale. And what are you gonna be waiting for? You're gonna be waiting for the seller and the listing agent and their title company to negotiate with the lender to see if they'll take, say, the 180 on the 200,000. That process can take four to six months. It's a uh, very, very common for someone selling a short sale, say another agent, to say, oh, we'll get you an answer in 30 days. No. It takes four to six months, and at the end of the four to six months, what the bank usually does is they do an appraisal, they look at the home, and they say, this is a $200,000 home. We want mm, 201 doesn't seem to make sense. Remember, they do want the home back. Now, of course, they don't take into account the condition of the home, the fact that the people have been living there for a year, they probably haven't been keeping up with it, the fact that you wanted to pay 180, none of that matters. They just say, nah, we want about 200. You say, no, four to six months you waited and you end up with nothing. So if you're getting surgery and you're thinking about a specific procedure and the doctor says, I'm not so sure if you do this procedure because 25% of the patients die, that just sounds like a statistic to you, but that doctor has seen one in four patients die, not make it. And so that means while he will do the surgery, he's probably thinking it's not a good idea. With short sales, probably 90% of the patients of the transactions die. Almost everyone who tries a short sale at the end is frustrated, is upset, is mad at somebody because something happened because the bank came back and said something crazy. They waited six months. What are they waiting for? Um, it's very, very common that a buyer will say they'll wait four, five, six months, and then a month or two into the process, they'll go find another house and they'll cancel that short sale that the other agents have already started working on. That makes the banks and the other agents even less motivated to work on the short sale offers because they're thinking in the back of their mind, eh, the buyer's maybe going to cancel. They're not going to wait for the whole process anyway. So if there's a nine in 10 chance that the short sale that you're going to get your offer accepted on is not going to close and there's 99 other homes to look at, let's find you another home. Let's also talk about auctions for a second. You get a lot of calls for people on an auction. And auctions also are something that people can buy houses on, but it's not a good deal. The reason why they're auctioned is because people lose their mind in an auction. Uh, when you do an auction, it's very time consuming. There'll be a certain auction. They'll put a, let's, we'll use 100X, 100% for the property. They'll put a 100X property on, for sale for 80X. No one gets everybody excited about 80X. Everyone will look, everyone will bid, thinking they're going to get it. They're not going to get it for 80X. So you have to actually stay up in the middle, 10 o'clock at night. You have to bid there, and there, the whole section is all set up, run by a robot. Again, another computer that you're bidding against. And if you do, what happens is the bids will go to 80, to 90, to 100, to 105, and there's going to be one buyer that's going to lose their perspective and pay full market value or more for it. When you buy an auction, it's usually only for a sophisticated buyer, maybe an investor who's not attached to when it closes, how it closes, and definitely not something you can get financing in. If you do win the auction bid, you tell them you gotta get financing, they don't care, they'll take your escrow deposit, a couple of thousand dollars, 
And then if you don't get financing in 30 days, they're not going to extend it. They're not going to talk to you. There is no one to talk to it. Literally, these auction it's literally all done by computer. There's no person on the other end. And so what will happen is you're almost guaranteed to lose your money um, if you get the home. So I had a friend who was a realtor and I was having lunch with her about a year ago. And she said, I'm going to buy a house. I'm going to bid on the auction. And I was so shocked. I was like, you're going to bid on the auction? She's like, yeah, I'll get a good deal on it. And, Okay, so she won the auction, and she's like, oh, I'm all excited, I won the auction. So I had lunch with her again a couple months later, and I said, what happened with that auction? Did you get that house? She's like, oh, my God, no, I canceled. I barely got my escrow back. It was a ripoff. It's a scam. These are realtors talking to other realtors. So this is how realtors feel as a member of the public, unless you're highly unattached to buying the home, unless you're an investor, and unless you have cash, it's probably not the option for you. Fortunately, there's just a few, but we get calls. I get calls out of all proportion because you got an 80X house. You have $160,000 asking price on a $200,000 house. Everyone goes crazy on that. Another thing is if you do get your offer accepted and you finally do get it for 180, the auction is going to charge a 5% buyer's premium on top of that. So you're going to take the purchase price, you're going to add 5%, that's not financeable, so you're going to put your down payment, your closing cost down, and you're going to give the auction company 5% cash. Again, only works well if you're an investor, not attached, you're getting a really good deal, and you're not financing it. That's hardly, very, very small proportion of the people who do that. And that's why most properties that are even up for auction are up one, two, three, four times for auction because they keep falling through because when people get involved in the process they say ah so you come to me as a realtor my job is to be your guide be your protector be your bulldog protect you during the transaction and you think about getting into an auction you can see the kind of conversation we're going to have you have no control over the process i have no control over the process it's almost guaranteed you're not going to be happy with the process why would we do that when there's 99 other homes out there we could just see buy close on yay and that's why I recommend that you look for what I'm going to call normal homes, which is a home for sale, the normal owner, or a bank-owned home. That's the majority of the market, and that's what you should buy unless you're an investor looking for a certain particular niche of property. Thanks.